So today we're going to talk about my new uh, excavator robot, which is 3D printed, and it's using my flywheel design. It's this guy right here. Some of you may recall my earlier flywheel walking robot that had the uh, crank on the side. And before then, then there was this flywheel powered car, which started off as a file on Thingiverse, which I reworked, I'm going to say improved. And basically I took my improvements from that, added more improvements to make this walking robot. And then I wanted to do another one, but I wanted it to be based loosely on the excavator robot toy in looks. And I wanted, instead of having the, uh, the crank for spinning up the disc inside, the flywheel, instead of it being on the side, I wanted a, a power dial on the back for controlling it. And so that meant I'd have to come up with a new way to uh, harness the flywheel power to the walking action of the legs. And um, I'll put a link down below to the website Alphadrome where I'll go ahead and I'll post pictures, uh, build pictures of this and how it worked. I don't think I'll do a build video or bother to put these files up on Thingiverse because I did that with uh, both this robot and the car and as far as I don't know no one's bothered to build one so since it takes about two days to do a build video and upload all those files of Thingiverse that's a lot of work it's a lot of my time if no one's gonna be doing it being involved so I think I'll give that a miss but as far as this guy goes you've got this power wheel on the back that you can just stick your finger in and just crank him up and there he is walking away from the corner. Let's, uh, let's make it a little more entertaining here. Huh? That's a, a long run time. Most of your friction toys, which are flywheel toys, also sewn under the name of inertia toys, don't have anywhere near the, the run time that these do. I mean, for example, this uh, original version, which has a, a wider uh, stance on the legs, more, more movement, it would go over six feet on a single crank of the flywheel, which is a lot longer than any uh, wind-up or even a inertia toy I can think of. And of course, the car we tested, and uh, I'd need to go to a gymnasium or a bowling alley to get a longer one, but I could get it to go between 40 and 50 feet on a single push, so the the improved flywheel and mating of the gears and rubber traction of the wheels and stuff all help. But there you have it. And in case you're not really familiar with the uh, older ones, there's I have three different versions here of the uh, excavator robot. And uh, some of them had a switch in the front that you would select whether you had it walking or had just the gears and the excavator spinning or a mode where all three would happen at the same time. And some of them uh, had an automatic function like that one, which when it would run, it would, you know, walk and then stop and then excavate and then walk and then stop and so on. This particular one is unique, uh, not just in the body color and everything, but that it was actually, this white box is its box. It's the actual factory box for it. It was a sample, probably from a toy show or a salesman sample, and uh, that's actually the way it was presented when they were trying to sell this version of the toy. So, there you go. Again, I'll uh, try to remember to put a link down below for, well, I might as well just do all three, for the car, the first robot, those files are on Thingiverse, and there's build videos. And I'll put a link for this one showing how I was able to change the uh, motion of the flywheel, which would be facing forward, like towards the little gears, but to turn that into a walking leg motion. Uh, basically use a cylindrical cam. It's, uh, as in these other projects, I used ball bearings and heavy metal shafts, so the robot itself is very durable and strong.
I think that's about all I wanted to say.